So the point is this, when you look outwardly, you see purpose. When you look inwardly, you see purpose. But when you look Godwardly, you actually see a real purpose begin to take shape, a purpose that is specific, not just to exist, but something more than that. You know, I was um, flipping through the channels not too long ago. I was uh, at a hotel, and I was flipping through channels. I like to have background noise when, I, when I'm traveling and when I'm working. I have three kids now, so I need background noise. Otherwise, I feel like something's wrong. Um, so I need to have background noise. So I begin to surf the channels. And I come across an uh, episode of a show called Everybody Loves Raymond. And in this show, Raymond was, being, um, was nervous because his, his son, uh, sorry, his daughter asked him, where do babies come from? And now he has to give the sex talk. He's got to give that talk, and that's going to be you know, uncomfortable for him. So he's stumbling over his words. How am I going to answer her question? Where's this going to come from? How am I going to say this thing and be delicate about it because she's so young? He walks into her room, sits down, and says, you know, he had a question for Daddy earlier. I'm ready to answer it. And then she asks the question, and she says, well, where do we come from? And he begins to talk about it. And she says, no, 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 no. Why does God put us here? It wasn't a sex talk at all. She wanted to know what the purpose of life was. What's the meaning of life? And from that, he began to fumble all over himself. He wasn't ready for that one. And so you know what his answer was? Because heaven's crowded. It's funny, but the point is that we, we think, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? This is the most uh, you know, toughest question to answer. We always think of you know, climbing these huge mountains and coming to the ashram, and there's the guru who's chanting, and he has a meaning of life because he's been pondering it his whole life, and somehow he has it. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Interestingly enough, if you look at the Westminster Confession, the Westminster Shorter Catechism says this, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. It offers that as the meaning of life. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. The point is this, that we are created to have relationship. We seek it out in all of our life. My friend's question was a question about relationship, the severing specifically of the relationship with his mother and the value he placed on it. We are naturally seeking of relationships. The Westminster Confession tells us, and I think the Bible it's basically a summarization of the Bible saying that you are created for relationship. That's the purpose of life. That's it. What explains that purpose? Jesus tells us that he has come so that we may know God and the one he has sent. By the way, the purpose of life is not to be happy and get stuff. That's not what the Christian worst message is. It's not rosy in those terms. It says sometimes you're going to have trouble and suffering and sorrow. It predicts that as the, the outcome of your belief in Jesus, by the way. So it doesn't sugarcoat things at all. It's not to be, you know, comfortable and happy and get money. It is to have relationship. What explains the innate desire? Everyone sitting in this room, I think, has a desire for relationship. What explains that? As the cause, you need to have an explanation for that desire. Oh, sorry, as the effect, we need to have the explanation of that desire from the cause. And of course, that comes from a Trinitarian view of God. Not just a Unitarian view of God, but a Trinitarian view of God. The Trinity actually explains why we want relationship as our purpose. Because God exists as a being in relationship. The Trinity is not one God and three gods, or one person and three persons. It is specifically one God who exists in three personhoods. One in essence, three in person. He is a being that exists in relationship from, time, from, from all eternity. He never did not have relationship. The Father loved the Son, the Son loves the Father, and the Father and Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit loved the Son, and vice versa. There's a community that happens there. It was always that way. So, God does not need us for relationship on the, human, on the Christian paradigm. He does not need us for relationship. He is not benefited in some way, and some need that he, or some lack that he has is taken up because we are suddenly appearing and he creates us. He doesn't need us for relationship. He's already have it. He already has it within himself. Which that means that the creation, this fine-tuned universe, this specifically selected DNA, was a gratuitous act, an act of pure love. He did not need us, and he gets nothing out of it. Nothing out of it that he doesn't already have. That he creates us anyway, to allow us the possibility of relationship. It is not for his sake that he creates us. It is for our sake. And I don't mean sake in terms of 
glory. Because our we do glorify God as Christians because I think that, that a God who's like that would be worthy of worship. But he creates us for our sake, meaning for our benefit. That's why he creates us. It's a completely selfless act. <laughs>